you've seen the Lakers from afar win the titles, and now you're a part of this in, 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 in the pivotal game five of the conference finals. You hit the game-winning shot. Can you talk about how that feels and, and the experience? Well, you know, <clears throat> usually after games, I like to move on. You know, uh, win or lose, you know, good or bad, you know, you, you move on. You know, um, we know game six is going to be tough. You know, we know it's going to be tough, and we got to go out there. And I felt we played good on their floor. You know, we just couldn't sustain it, I guess, you know. But, um, you know, we went by 30, we went by one. You know, it was just a win. Mike? Ron, is that safe to say it's the biggest shot of your career? Yeah, biggest layup. <laughs> I, mean, I miss a lot of layups during the regular season, you know. Um, it was funny, you know, my previous teams, I make more jumpers, you know, than layups. And, but now I'm, I'm missing jumpers and missing layups. But, um, you know, just stay with it, staying with it, and, you know, trying to stay focused and, you know, just trying to play my part and see what happens. Futterman. Thank you. Ron, obviously there were highs and lows in the last few minutes for you. Uh, yes. Uh, and, of course, with the victory, it, it makes the palatable, the, the lows. But can you talk about the uh, – the three-point shot that you made. And, yeah. and Phil said he was sort of talking to you. Yeah. Uh, wasn't sure you were trying. He was, he was sure, actually, that you were trying not to hear him, but I guess you did probably hear him talk to you afterwards. Oh, no, no, no. I always hear coach. You know, um, you know, just playing for coaches, you know, my first year, you know, obviously I'm a better player than uh, as you seen me last year in the playoffs, you know, and, um, you know, obviously I'm a better player than, you know, than my numbers are speaking right now. But, you know, there's a, a new system for me, and I'm trying to somehow – you know, um, make it work for the team, you know, so that's kind of why, you know, I kind of wanted to take that shot. You know, it's not always a good shot, but nobody's perfect. Mark you know, nice. um, and uh, we move on and, you know, you just try to get better from it. And obviously, you know, 24 seconds on the shot clock, you bring it out. You bring it out and you, and you set back up. Mark? Ron, how did, how did you uh, um, happen to be where you were on Kobe's shot? You were in front of the basket. Is that just all there was available there? Well, um, I thought Kobe got fouled on the shot, so I just kind of figured it was going to be short. It looked like he got hit on his arm a little bit, so I figured it was going to be short, and uh, it was a little short. Mark? Go ahead. Wicker? He just asked it. Okay, so let's go to Grieger. Could you just describe... That last play unfold um, from when you get the ball, who you felt on you, or if you felt anyone near you, and putting it in and everyone hugging on you. Well, you know, uh, it was weird because I wasn't used, I'm not used to getting hit a lot. Um, just like basketball hit, you know, not anything intentional or flagrant. But these guys, are, they're tough, and they're, and, and they're coming and they're attacking us. You know, they're really, they're really playing hard. So, you know, you know, it was times where I get a rebound, but I might not get it because, you know, these guys are playing so hard. So I just thought I might just throw, away, throw around my weight a little bit, you know, um, being one of the heaviest, you know, small forwards, you know, in the NBA, in, in NBA outside LeBron. So, you know, I got to let my weight, let my weight work for me a little bit because these guys are, you know, these guys are tough. They, they just can constantly, consistently, you know, just coming over our backs. He's just playing hard, trying to win. Last two, Jay. Ron, a lot of times when it's especially Kobe was known to make those shots. You know, I think the tendency is to just freeze and watch, right. um, you know, especially with that little time left. Why did you run in, and how, how did you not get caught watching? Just got to continue to play. You know, uh, I was kind of not playing my game from the beginning of the game, and it kind of carried over. So in the second half, I was finding my way a little bit. I made some good passes and made some good steals and got some rebounds, so I guess – you know, that aggressive play can, you know, carry it over, you know, to that last possession. Last yeah. question, Bill. Yeah, Ron, when you were taking that three-pointer, the entire arena was shouting no, no, yeah. no. Did you, did you hear them? No, you know, during the game, you're, really not, you're not supposed to hear them. But what, what was going to you? Was, was it an impulsive thing? I mean, were you, when the minute saw through the ball, too, you knew it was, you were, it was going up? Well, you know, when you're playing a game, you don't really hit a – you don't really, is that like an earthquake or something? <laughs> wow. <laughs> but you know, um, <laughs> you know, during the game, you know, you don't really hear, you know, way, you don't really hear the fans, you know, 
You know, that's why you see Kobe, he made shots, he don't hear the fans. You know, um, on the road, he made big shots. You don't hear, he don't hear the fans, you know, screaming no or yes or please don't, whatever. You know, you just try to focus on the game. And um, we was up three. I was hoping to go up six at that point. All right, thank you very much, Ron.